to this second session with a very inspiring and a powerful title, The Power of Women's Networks in Building a Culture of Peace, Taking Action for Peace, The Way Forward. So, uh, uh, my name is Britta Juskan. I'm from Sweden, and my husband is American. That's why I put Houston is in there. He's actually from Atlanta. But uh, uh, I work myself as a district nurse, uh, not in the hospital. So when I come home to people's homes, I can see their lives, their life story very much. And it's a blessing to have this kind of work. Uh, because they are sick and in the hospital they usually test their diagnosed. But at home you can see the photographs, you can see the whole life, and you can really develop the intuitive uh, ability, I think. I'm very grateful for this. So uh, we already have such an incredible network here, and each one of you has a very special history that you bring to this uh, place and you come from different nations with different types of freedoms or liberties or not. Myself, I come from Sweden, a country that has maybe the longest lasting peace in the world. It's over 200 years. So many things I take for granted. And um, I feel so sorry that a lot of you don't have this. But we also have a lot of problems. And um, so with this, I want to introduce my first speaker here. She is really a groundbreaker, I would like to say, a very great person uh, with a long career in the politics, which is not an easy area as a woman. Uh, she became the first uh, woman as a prime minister in Finland. And she also uh, served at the European Parliament for 15 years. Wow. Yeah. with a lot of support. Uh, she's now working uh, more on a local level. And um, um, she's also, yeah, she has a law degree and she works as a minister of justice. Actually, a lot of things. Still very active. Uh, but she also is a part, a part of the The member, yeah, the chairman of the Swedish Finnish Cultural Foundation, which is a big foundation in Europe. So, with no further ado, I want to introduce Anneli Jekemat. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and brave gentlemen. <laughs> And dear friends, it's a great honor for me to take part in this session and discuss with you. This is an important issue. To get peace requires that both men and women are included in the process. Now, women are the hidden ensigns of building peace. Women are not in the headlines, but in the long working process, in the scenes, women make very important work all over the world. Many of my friends have worked in different countries, in Bosnia and Herzegovina, Ukraine, Afghanistan, Armenia, Azerbaijan, and also in the Middle East. There are thousands of women included in the process. My own experience is, is very limited, but I dare to say that I have done one or two important parts to get Bosnia in Herzegovina involved in the European cooperation. During 
I help that country become member of the Council of Europe, the very important human rights organization in, in Europe, which during that time included only 29 countries, now it has to, it has 45 member states. But before a member or a, before a country can become a member of that organization, it must fulfill human rights criteria. And that why, that's why I visited Bosnia and Herzegovina to monitor how is the situation. And I was not the only one, there was also a man from Hungary. We do did this work. And the first visit was maybe most memorable for me and also important for the whole process. You know that there are many religious groups and ethnic groups in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And when we went, we had invited the different groups once together. You may be think that it's not so, <coughs> what I say, something that is memorable. But it was the first time after the war when the different countries <coughs> sat at the same table. And <coughs> we could see and feel that there were tensions. And also in <coughs> memorable is that when we went to, to the parliament, there was written in the, in the doors that guns must be left outside. So that, that was the beginning. Okay, we ate lunch. And then we who were... <coughs> with outsiders, we left them discussing together different religious and ethnic groups. A Serb woman, a Bosniak man, Muslim, <coughs> Orthodox and Catholics. They continued discussing of current everyday life and a little bit after also they begin to discuss what happened during and after the war. That was the beginning of that process. And after long discussions, after two, three years, four years, Bosnia Herzegovina became member of the Council of the Europe. And it was not because of us, Europeans who came outside the country, but it was because their own will to enter the human rights organizations and to become part of the European Union later. And the process was long because healing trauma, building trust and enabling forgiveness takes a long time. And it is not done in headlines. It is done in the minds, brains and hearts. And that's why it is so difficult. We know we in the morning we discuss, and it was maybe a difficult issue for some of us, so that to change mind, it takes time. Mm -hmm. If I have time, I can say, pardon? Yeah. Okay, three minutes then. I say, some words, what I have noticed is important to, to get peace and reconciliation. 
the thirst for those who are involved in the process. They must know the long history of the nation and the region. Because, for example, me, I came from Finland, totally different culture. I had to do much work to get involved in the history of the different ethnic groups, religious groups, and so on. The second tool I have used is cooperation between different authorities and with non-governmental organizations. They are really important. And this organization is also important. We are full, this room is full of people. We can do also very much if we will and if we are not lazy. And actually, I would like to finish with, with words and going back to the previous discussion when it was the question that how can we confirm men that the women are competent and, <coughs> and uh, ambassadors of peace. I want to say that first we must confirm <laughs> ourselves, we must be ready to work hard. We can't be lazy. If we want to, to work as a conciliator, it's not only to go and begin to discuss. Before that, you must have done really much work. And I would like to say that sometimes we women are also too lazy. It's so easy, it's so easy to look and say that it is because of men we can't do anymore. It is because of us ourselves. We must learn during this weekend from ourselves. We can network and we can decide that in the future we really do and we want to do more at our own local level and where we work and we must network much more. That was my message. Thank you. Can you imagine what she went through, <laughs> becoming the first uh, woman to lead a nation? It's not easy. We still haven't, uh, we haven't had one to do that yet. No. Uh, anyway, uh, so so we know we have to work hard, and we, we look for you to for you from your example and work hard. And we are so happy that you're here today to, to share with your expertise, very practical point, and also to realize how important the NGO boards is, because it's quite obvious that the governments cannot do this by themselves. So thank you very much, Anna.